everybody. It's me, Maureen, from Massachusetts. I'm sitting here in my dining room. And I made that rags to rugs loom. Bought the kit. Put it together. My husband and I attempted, but we had done it all wrong. And the wood pieces um, initially were cut too wide, so I highly recommend making sure your pieces of wood for the loom, and I'll show you, are the right size because we ended up having to take it apart, do it all over. But my son um, helped us out, whereas he had the uh, table saw, strip saw, and he cut the pieces to where we needed it. So. Um, it's, it's better now, and I was able to sit here last night, and by myself, I put it together. I nailed all the nails in, and everything, and here she be. See the warp? You can see, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll explain it all to you, but I am actually working with a denim. Denim dungarees. So I then go into my local thrift stores and getting denim and cutting them into strips about oh, an inch and a half wide. And it's a whole process. Um, and I find it very um, relaxing. Uh, I kind of you know, if you do have a lot on your mind or whatever, this is, you're forced to concentrate right with this. So it takes your mind off anything else that might be weighing heavy on your mind. Yeah. So uh, what I did was, this is the um, 27 by 39. And I figured that'll make a nice rug or making rug. And so uh, I'm kind of mixing a dark denim with a light denim. Yeah. And I sat for days prior just cutting strips of the denim. So I have quite a bit here so I can keep going. And um, you know, just having fun with it. I can't wait. Now, you're, because I'm working with denim and it's a heavier weight, they suggested for your war, which is the fabric or substance that you're using to go with, um, be, between each nail to create the loom, the war. They suggested when you're making a denim rug to go with a thin, more like twine or embroidery uh, thread, kind of heavy duty. This is uh, postal twine, and I, I think it's working out pretty good. Um, and your nails are an inch apart across the board, there's, there's uh, 25 at each end. And you follow the video. Um, rags to Riches, or there's another one, um, DIY in the house, both of those are good for giving you an idea as to how to go about this. I've been watching both of them to get my creativity and my know-how and my knowledge of how to do it. So, um, now for other, um, rugs, future rugs, I will be using probably, like if I'm going to do a cotton, all cotton fabrics, which I'm eager to do too, um, I will probably use tied sheets, old sheets, strips together. You want your warp to pretty much be all one color, where your woven fabric can be lots of different colors to create that color you're going for and that style you're going for. Now, um, I also, in my travel to get the twine, I picked up a heavier, dutier one. Now, this one is more of a cotton chalk line twine, and this might be good, too, uh, for uh, a rag rug, but I went with a little bit thinner knowing that my 
strips were um, more than three quarters or more like an inch, inch and a half. So I went with the thinner twine for my first one. So let's bring this down. Again, these, uh, these pieces for this loom were 27 across and 39 lengthwise and an inch and a half wide by, I think it's an inch board. And this was soft pine, so it was easy to nail my nails and matter of fact, some of them are kind of went through a little bit and I gotta watch that on the other side. Um, so, um, I have enough here actually because I bought wider boards and now they're cut, I could make another one too, so that's kind of nice. But anyway, and I also see where, being that it's such soft wood, it's got a little split right there, so I've got to tape that. type fan blowing on me here and that's why you'll think but I just if I was to sit here without it I am sweating bullets my goodness yeah and I've got to get to my thrift store too and the pharmacy again today so I just thought I'd do a video do a little bit of this with you while we um talk this morning now uh I had put this together the denim on a big ball, but I realize now you don't need to do that. You only need strips of a certain length because that's really about all you can handle weaving in the loom. You don't, you can't put a big ball through the loom, so that was counterproductive here. But anyway, well, you learn, you learn as you go. But I'm getting it. So now, um, what I want to do too. Let me prepare a couple things. you but as you attach you fold your fabric over and if you had cotton you could put them together because they're thinner but because this is denim you can only really do it like one by one and you want to fold it over oh, well half to three quarters of an inch and give a little tiny slip not too big I found because it flips through all right then you're going to bring, I'm going to do the same with that. So, and again, it's weaving with blues, dark blue and white blue. And I have a See this piece right here? I need to fold it over. Okay. And snip. And then I'll have a hole there. And then I take this one that has the hole and I lay them on top of each other. Then I bring the tail of this all the way up through those holes and pull. And that joins my strip. I'll be doing the same with this piece in a little bit, okay? So, and then you're weaving 
I've got it started so now these two strings stay like this and you weave in and out of these. You always have the two together. But when you start it, it's a little different. You actually go through on the first row, which creates this design overall. So it's a little, little, um, I don't want to say confusing because I don't want to throw you off as to this isn't that difficult. And it's actually fun. So uh, follow the instructions, watch your videos, and I'm telling you, I think you'll have a nice project. Um, I'm going to keep this nearby as I weave with you.
I'm trying to pull a couple of strips through that have been bound together, but maybe you don't do that, right? You stretch it out for a while. Still learning. <laughs> Thank you. 
So what you're doing, kind of keeping this, so again, you want to try to, mine is turning the other way, which probably isn't a good thing, but anyway, I have it under there, so now this piece goes in the back, okay, and comes up, and then this piece goes over and under. She said, so you'll know if you're doing it right, uh, because um, you'll start to see the color, uh, you know, very slightly, and see that weave. you get going and it's gonna make a nice sturdy rug I think plus soft I mean if you like denim you know and I, I like the way denim looks anyway so this would be kind of cool yeah and I also picked this project um, see, you know, because all right now I'm getting See how easy that is? Yeah. Now, the thing is, now I gotta add some more. More strips. And more light blue. Not very big with the holes, hopefully. 
do the same on here. I hope not. I think I make my holes too big. Anyway. Supposed to kind of fold in. There you go. Nope. Got a feeling. I'm making my holes too big, evidently. And the denim, for some reason, just breaks away. So I have to be careful of that. All right. You've got to be able to see it slip in nicely. Nope. What's going on? Is it the denim? It's just not letting me do it. Wow. Okay, well, keep trying. This is a little frustrating because normally you don't have to play with it quite so much. Let's see. Too much and have it come out again. Mm -hmm. 
not do that with this. So. Oh. Normally I haven't had that bad of a problem attaching the denim. So um, just bear with me folks that normally I was weaving last night and that did not happen. So um, it's something. Like I said, you get the holes too big and it's going to slip through. That's not too bad. But this is how you attach those strips, yeah? That's right. Again, I don't, I'm not doing this video to show that I'm a professional. I'm just starting. What I'm doing is showing crafty time with Maureen Sky and all the different things that I like to get into. That's, so don't look to me for uh, professional on this project just yet. Let me get a few under my belt and see what happens. Something ain't right. So I am doing something my holes are too big or some darn thing. Although it doesn't look like they're too big, but try it one more time. Maybe I'm pulling too tight on them, too. I don't know. All right, that's together. Now, again, this one to the back and up the next one. This one. This one. Over and, and to the back. And up the next one. This one, over and to the back, and up the next one. This one, over and to the back, and up the next one. This one, over and to the back, and up the next one. And this one, over and to the back, and come up around that pole. This one has to... Is that making some kind of sense, people, I hope?
big hole at all. Although it's got to be a little bit bigger than that. Yeah, it's got to be so I can get my finger through it. People can you see what I'm doing. Thank you. 
Well, that's kind of it folks. I'm going to be heading out for my uh, errands. I gotta run and I'll let you know. I'll be back. We'll continue this later, this clip so that I do like it. I do. I do like it. I'm glad I did that. Uh, gonna be fun. Um, yeah. I love it. I have sourdough bread rising on the back burner of my stove, and this one I put in. Uh, my first time putting chopped garlic and chopped fresh rosemary into the dough. So we'll see how that comes about, right? So my next thing with that, it's been sitting all night and it's got to double in bulk and it's getting there. It's very warm too. So. But anyway, um, it's looking okay, looking good. And so I'm going to let it rise some more while I go off. Then I'm going to put it in my well-floured banton. Get it in there and into the fridge for about four or five hours. I'll do that pretty soon. And then I'll be able to bake it later tonight so that we'll have it tomorrow at some point. And it, it should be good, you know. I guess it is warm, and so I just hope it isn't too warm, you know. But anyway, that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, I did pick up a nice book here, too, the other day. Let me move this so I don't break my... my uh, because that's going to split that, and i got to take that. I see it. I don't want it breaking on me. I gotta take that up. Okay. Um, I do. I did pick up a book the other day at a thrift store. Um, Pasta Fresca. I think it was all of a dollar, maybe, if that. And it looks good. I've been looking through. 
because I have a uh, the pasta maker that is attached to my um, mixer there, KitchenAid. So, uh, linguine fini alla rugetta. Thin linguine with arugula and spicy tomato sauce. Doesn't that sound good? Wow. There's a few things in here I would like to make. Yeah. Pasta soups. Oh, yeah. For the fall. Yeah. So this is going to be fun to review. It's my, an exuberant collection of fresh, vivid, and simple pasta recipes. Authors of Cucina Rustica and Cucina Fresca. Viana Laplace and E. Evan Kleiman. This book was $25.95 in Canada, and in USA it originally sold for $17. Yeah. So, that's what Maureen Sky's been up to, people. I hope you're having a good day, a good week, a good month, and all that. I hope that uh, the universe is being good to you. And stay cool, people. It is hot. I'll be in my pool later if the weather allows. And in the meantime, I've got to take a ride to get my meds, and of course I'm gonna hit the thrift store. <laughs> Can't forget that, right? And until we meet again, I certainly hope the universe provides. I really do. Thank you now. Bye-bye.